you are infected. The virus is in your body now. It's only a matter of time before. In Project Zomboid, there is no cure. But what if that wasn't the case? What if there was a way out? I've installed a mod that lets you work towards a cure for the zombie virus, but it isn't easy. You need knowledge, equipment, resources, hard work and time. Time is something I don't have. The virus will kill me in one week. The first few days aren't so bad. After day three, things get serious. Your life begins to fade until day seven arrives and you become one of them. This is Edward, a doctor, beaten, infected. He isn't done yet. And this is his story. Day one, I needed to work fast. I needed equipment. The hospital? No, there wasn't an option. I had to work with what I had. I would make my own workstation here. But I could look through the house. But the pain was real. I took some pills. First thing first, tools. Across the street, there was a shop, but they wouldn't make this so easy, of course. I singled them out, isolating them. I had to bring them individually. Combat wasn't my specialty. I managed to get into the tool shop. This was fundamental to get my research station running. Duct tape, wire, nails, safety glasses, every single thing was necessary. There was a lot to be done. I needed to create a workbench, chemistry station, furnace, microscope, centrifuge, spectrometer, the sheer amounts of material materials I needed was huge. Not only this, but I also had to train my medical skills further. I had no time to lose. Thankfully, I was in Louisville. The good thing is there's plenty of resources. The bad thing, well, I got out of there carrying so many things that my body was crumbling. I left everything back home. Then, the window. First zombie that tried to get in. I had to block line of sight quickly, and if I could, barricade myself. But. There was no time. With each movement of the clock hand, my life was closer to its end. A sledgehammer, a crowbar, load was good. But was it enough? On my way back, I got their attention. I was at a disadvantage. Over encumbered, I tried to stand my ground, but it was futile. I dropped what I could, hit by hit, with patience, measuring each single blow. More zombies, even more. The noise attracted them. I turned back, I ran, I climbed the wall, and dropped my suitcase, came back to grab it just in time. Overloaded, agitated, exhausted. I didn't dare to look behind my back. I turned in the next corner and went home. I caught my breath, rested, and moved on. I put some sheets over the windows. It was time to work. This was going to be my workshop. First step, the workbench. I checked which materials I had and which ones were missing. This assembled watches, radios, TVs, CD players, piece by piece. Next, I needed metal, but the tools were missing. That was next. Had to take some pills that night, just to be able to sleep. Woke up around 4 a.m. Made my way to a pharmacy up north. I grabbed the most important things. They were in. The back door was locked. I panicked, tried to escape through the front door. Got stuck, but I squeezed through and fell to the floor. Got back up, no escape, I counted. Three, two, one, now. Shaking, I made my way out. That was almost it. I was careless. I mean, what would you do if you knew how much time you had left? Would you remain calm? After taking some pills, I entered the storeroom. Grabbed some planks to build a workbench. It seemed that I was in some sort of market. Got some materials and tools. Propane torch, welder mask, just what I needed, alongside some metal. My body was on the verge of collapsing, but I carried everything I could with me. This slowed me down. Sets were really close. I tried to climb in, but it was pointless. I could hear them. I went inside another house, laid down in the backyard to catch a breath, and waited out the horde. Home again. I had everything I needed. This moment was of utmost importance, a light in the middle of darkness. My workbench was a reality. This would allow me to assemble new equipment. First in line, a muffled furnace, which I would use to melt shattered glass into flasks and tubes. I needed to get even more metal, so I did. Taking apart refrigerators and ovens, house by house, room by room, until I ran out of fuel. That night, I grabbed my suitcase and went on my way. Try to avoid travel where I could, minimizing risks, not taking any chances. I found some chemicals in a storeroom inside a building. This was essential for my work on the sea room. At midnight, I left everything back home. I spent a few hours scavenging the nearby houses for anything useful. That had its consequences. Once I finished, I ran into a barbecue with a full propane tank. 
Now I was finally able to finish gathering the metal sheets I needed. Only thing remaining was a car battery. And with that, the muffled furnace was fabricated. Piece by piece, I collected enough to manufacture my first few flasks and tubes. Symptoms were about to start kicking in soon. I was on edge, kept breaking and melting. To make use of them, I needed to set up a chemistry set. Just a few metal bars, some wood, put everything up together and there it was. Development. I was running out of space. I needed to expand, so I did. Brought down those walls. After setting up the place, I assembled a centrifuge and a microscope. Things were taking shape. Now the actual testing. Before I could even attempt to find a cure, I needed to buy some time, live with infection long enough to get somewhere. I needed to create a serum. This involved a complicated process. To create the first injection, I need sodium hypochlorite, blood plasma, and leukocytes. First, I mixed some hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide and water. The leukocytes were a bit more complicated to get. I needed ammonium sulfate. I colored my safety goggles, got an apron, and carefully mix sulfuric acid, ammonia, and water. This was half of what I needed for the leukocytes. Next thing I had to get was blood. For the corpse autopsy, the one thing I was missing was a scalpel, which I got in a quick run to the nearby pharmacy up north. A paramount step in this research, the first corpse autopsy, the key in defeating the infection, were them. They had the secret, the code I needed to break, to solve. Would I be able to save myself? Save others? Was there a chance for humanity? This was another chapter. The corpses had to be fresh, no more than 12 hours since death. Each Z I struck had a new purpose. Each blow I landed had a different meaning. Each corpse I left was analyzed. The process would be arduous. The blood needed to be intact, pristine, no tainted blood. Every zombie I saw, I killed, and I got greedy. Death made sure to keep me in line. A reminder, I could be infected, but I wasn't immortal. Limping. Came back to the lab. I divided the blood into components using the centrifuge. Got cells and plasma. With the help of the microscope, I extracted the leukocytes from the blood cells. I had everything. The first true test. A milestone. If this worked, maybe there was a chance. A chance in this race between me and death. And just before I started walking, my body, inside, I felt it. It was happening. I was beginning to turn, slowly. My life was fading. Quickly, I mixed the ingredients and made the shot. If the research was correct, the serum would give me an additional 24 hours before symptoms returned. I cooled myself, took the clothes off, and did it. The serum worked. I couldn't believe it. This was a big step for humankind. The road to a cure will be tough, but I was ready. Rain was pouring down my bloody jacket. I barely could distinguish the silhouettes of the undead in front of me. My blows were guided by their screams. Although my visibility was impaired, the path ahead of me was clear. I needed two things, glass and blood. The storm didn't stop me, dissecting each and every corpse over pools of water, crushing skull after skull. It could take me hundreds, maybe thousands. The field work was fundamental, but one must never forget the theory behind it either. I went to the nearby library and grabbed every single book that could aid me in my research. To carve a new path, one must build upon the legacy of others, combining both mind and muscle. I didn't have the luxury to choose. I had to put myself out there. I had to look death into its eyes, facing risks, learning, adapting, changing. After all, I was a stranger in their world. In a way, I was the intruder. Day six, the feeling returned. If I was to conduct this investigation further, I had to find a way to improve the serum, a stronger booster. But tunnel vision can be dangerous. I was too busy thinking about the research that one of them got inside my own house. I let my guard down. The key in survival is maintaining balance, stability, poise, paying attention to every front. I manufactured the second serum. It wasn't better than the one before though. I stored it in the freezer and the cycle went on. Blood, glass, food, research. Corpses were piling up. That putrid air isn't a good thing to breathe. Growth, with the hard work and the right mindset, the reward eventually arrives. That night, my body was shaking. 
woke up past midnight, used the second serum, calm, for a moment. With the knowledge I gathered, I felt ready to attempt to make an improved variant. This would give me more time. To refine my analysis methods, I needed to set up an autopsy table. With my welding mask and propane torch, I got all the metal I needed and set up everything in my lab. Time and death do not wait. Went outside to look for a subject to analyze, contemplating all the remains of the undead I killed spread all over the street. A single target. I brought it back and began the autopsy. This was definitely better than working in the middle of the flooded street. I had to use a garbage bag to move everything outside. The bin was too small to fit everything there, so I left it on the side. More reading and testing and mixing and extracting again and again. This improved booster required more resources than the first one. I even ran out of flasks and tubes. Had to reuse old ones by disinfecting them. But after a lot of hard work, I was finally able to synthesize a stronger dose. Maybe all of this wasn't in vain. I stored the serum in the freezer down below. I spent the rest of the day gathering the remaining tub water from houses nearby. Water services had shut down recently. Thankfully, I still had electricity. I boiled the water and used it to sterilize the remaining dirty flasks and tubes. Only thing left undone was cleaning the autopsy table. I had to find some bleach and towels to be able to use it again. I scavenged every single bathroom in the vicinity. Found some towels, but no bleach. Nevertheless, I kept working on the field. No corpse was left behind. Every single one was analyzed. No hesitation. I felt comfortable being surrounded by the frantic bloodshed. I was no stranger to confrontation anymore. No more hiding behind papers, desks and books. I looked forward to wiping them out, taking up arms against them. Their remains lying down on the street were a testament to my new self. This heightened my senses. It drove my will. This was warfare and I was going to exterminate them. I wouldn't give up. We weren't done yet. Humankind would rise again. I needed to refine my station, go beyond, not to meet, but exceed my goals. I needed more. The next morning, the infection crawled back, but I was fixed on beating it. I injected the improved serum into my body. It felt good. And it kept me thinking. I managed to manufacture a set of pills that contained part of the booster shot. They weren't replaced the injection, but would be useful to in just a little bit more time. Everything was coming together. With all of the experience and discoveries I've made, I felt ready to make an advanced neutralizer. This creation will be the key to finding a final solution. I finished scavenging the nearby buildings and went to the lab. The process felt so natural to me now. My hands were moving without me even thinking. I was two steps forward, mixing, extracting, dividing, learning, gathering, cleaning, working, and... No. No. How? People. Was this real? A rescue? I wasn't ready. My work wasn't finished. What if they weren't here to save me? What if they were here to kill me? I couldn't risk it. Not now. Not yet. I had to continue my work. I kept going. The sound went away. The new shot was almost finished, but there was one thing missing. I needed new equipment. Chromatograph. I had to expand even more, breaking barriers, defying limits, assembling my own destiny by hand, taking what I needed. It was ready. I had the basis, the core for creating a cure for the zombie virus. I synthesized the advanced booster. This was the final stretch. The cure was almost in my hands. I felt unstoppable, alive. One last push. They were the prey now, one after the other, blow after blow, from sunrise to nightfall, page after page, no matter the rain, no matter the darkness, no matter how many, I persevered, rinse and repeat, polishing, refining, evolving, growing, day after day, no hesitation, determined to end this once and for all, a new beginning, a new opportunity, reaching new grounds, new frontiers, no matter, I was going to end it. And so, after the harrowing uphill battle that I endured, I synthesized the cure for the zombie virus. The key to stop the end of the world. I was at peace. It was a strange feeling. I wasn't running anymore. This opened up so many possibilities. I officially came back from the dead. But one question still remained. 
was there even still a world to save? That will be the next step. Thank you for watching all the way through. I'm Arian. I hope you had a good time. If you liked this, I tried to survive with nothing in pure wilderness in this video here. Hope to see you again. Goodbye.